Okay guys, so in this video we're going to ask one of the most frequent asked questions about JavaScript. So let's get into it. How do I return the response from a, an asynchronous call? So the description or the question here is, I have a function foo which makes an Ajax request. How can I return the response from foo? I tried to return the value from the success callback and as well as assigning the response to a local variable inside the function and return that one, but none of those ways actually return the response. Let's look at the code example that we have here. So there's a function foo, a variable results, and then we're using jQuery's Ajax call with some type of URL. Then we have a success callback that returns a response object of some sort. We assign that to the result, and we have a comment here. I tried that one as well, so basically that we are trying to return the response, but still we get and basically we get a, a return value of undefined and then finally we return result like this and then we see that variable results equals to foo it always ends up being undefined so what's going on here well this is a great question so let's dive into it the first thing we're going to have to do is to take a look at the setup that i have here just to illustrate what we're doing here so we have an express server here with some endpoint called foo and then we have a sync endpoint that is going to serve up the synchronized HTML and the async endpoint is going to serve up the async HTML. So we're going to talk about the sync first because I want to illustrate what's ha actually happening here. And as you can see we have these two scripts here. Let's look at this one first. So it's an HTML page with where we include jQuery which is here and the sync script which is here. Now let's just have a look at what the output is going to be. So if I just refresh this page, as you can see, we're, we're just running this endpoint on our little local web server here, and it's printing out some output. Now, let's look at the sync script. So, this is, virtu this is, a, is virtually the same code as we saw here. It's very similar, at least, with a few moderation, like few changes. Now, we have this file here with the foo function and we I've tr just assigned results to one and then in s you, I make the ajax call to slash foo which we saw earlier is going to return an object with a foo property set to one and then this is the thing that I, find, I found a little bit curious about the example because in the in the example we never like the the it seems to to me it would be very natural to just try since this is a function why not just try and log out the response when like for this function because this is the success callback in other words when this ajax call is successful this function is going to run that i think I, I feel that it would be fairly straightforward so we're just going to try it we're going to log out the response and then finally we're going to simply return results and basically, this is what's going to happen. So we're going to call full foo. We're going to set it to results to whatever foo is returning, and then we're going to log out whatever results is. Let's look at what's happening. As we could see here, the first thing that happens is that we log out one, and then we log out foo with the property of one, or rather, the way the property foo is equal to one. So what's actually going on here? What's actually happening is that we are simply returning results and I can even do something like this result equal to response and let's save that let's run it again and you still see that the script is still it's still one and so what's going on there well what's happening is that this call here this Ajax call is an asynchronous operation which means that everything up until this function call is synchronous. In other words, we are doing this and then this is happening. But when an async call is made, you cannot treat it as a synchronous operation, which means that this thing here is going to, the success function that we are seeing right here is going to execute after we have returned results, which means that the result is now one, this is happening and this is going to take a little while and so we return results because and this has never happened which means that the result when we are returning result it's still equal to one and it's only when a little while later when success the success callback the success callback is called when this code is actually running so results gets a result gets allocated to the response object late at the later stage 
that's why wh what's happening in the async. Uh, that, that's what asynchronous means. So JavaScript has these these asynchronous operations, which basically is like saying that hey. I need to do some work in parallel to what's already happening in my code. Can you just put this in a separate thread, run it? And that's why this callback f pattern is very, very common in JavaScript, where you just declare a function that is going to run when the asynchronous code is finished. So that's that. That's like that's what's happening here. So that's why we see this lo this log response after this code is run here. So I want to make that perfectly clear. This code is running after this code. This code is always running before this code. In general, uh, that, that's how it works. Right, now let's look at how we can solve this problem. So we have a async HTML, which is basically the same type of page. Let's do this. Let's go to that. And now we see two log outputs. That's going to make sense in just a moment. Let's look at the async script. So how do we do this? Like we have this asynchronous Ajax call in our function. How do we solve this problem where we just we want to get the value that this Ajax call is returning to us? Now as you can see here, I've put this in a self-invoking function, and that's just to kind of avoid name collision because we can't have two foo functions in the same scope. So let's just bear with me. So we have this function foo and it's going to return. Ajax, uh, you see this is virtually the exact same thing. And then we do this. So we call foo and then we do dot then with a function, our lambda function, that is going to get the results, log out the results. So that's what ha is happening right here. That's the output that we're, we're expecting. So what's happening is that jQuery's Ajax function is returning a promise, and a promise is a object that holds a two. It has two functions in general that you need to know about: dot then and dot catch. I'll not talk about dot catch because dot catch is for handling errors. So if this Ajax call fails for some reason, you will you will handle it in a certain manner. But basically, dot then means that. When this function is run is finished and it gets the response, then you do dot then on that function, and that f that uh, function is going to require a function that is going to get the response or the result of this function as its input. So what you're seeing here is that this result object is actually what's happening here. That's the way the the old way you would handle asynchronicity in JavaScript. Now there's a nicer way to do this, which is the new way, which is on is it's all is supported in the more like the modern browsers, and that is to declare a function as an async function. So I, the, I'm using ECMAScript six here as well, but you can do this with you know still using the function keyword. So what you need to do is that you need to declare your function, this one this function here as async. Now I'm declaring this as async as well, and that's because the async keyword does not work at the root scope of your browser. That means that you need to have, like, as the async keyword basically declares a function as being asynchronous, so you can use the await keyword in order to wait for basically different prom for a promise to, uh, or asynchronous code to be resolved. I I'll touch on it in just a moment. So just to remember this, if you want to use ace, th this async keyword, you can't. You need to wrap it in a self-invoking function or something like that. It has to be part of a function, otherwise it won't work. So here we are. I'm declaring async from our function foo. We're still doing the Ajax call, and then we return the exactly the same t interface as we saw earlier with the response being returned in the success, success case. And this is where the difference happens. So now that we've declared this function foo as async, I can use the await keyword. And since you know I'm in the scope of an async function, this is what's going to happen here. That this is going to run. <coughs> it's going to allow me to skip using dot then. But these are equivalent. What's happening? Th this line here is equivalent to basic. To basically, what's happening over here. So I can just skip using dot then and just declare results uh, as a, I would in synchronous code, and then log out the results. And as we could see earlier, it's going to do the same thing. It's 
both of these are working just as intended. So these are the two ways that you handle asynchronous code. It's the, the you have the old way by you chaining promises like this, and you have the new way of basically handling things in a more with the async keyword. Hopefully this was useful to you and have a great day.